Jamaica, on an island, the couple of miles west of here. We have Karopan in the Oslo Fjord, Liber and Heidebu on the western and eastern coast of Denmark, respectively. Now, I use the word towns there, probably not all too accurate. Uh, even if it's height, Birka, as the capital of then Sweden, uh, only has a permanent population of 1,000 people or so. Unless you're from Northern Iceland, that's hardly all that impressive. However, to the Scandinavians, these are the first signs of urbanism which come out to our home. They don't have, you know, the Greeks or the Romans coming here to build cities for them. Now, in addition to the four Scandinavian towns, there's a bunch more scattered around the Baltic Sea area, which are either founded by, corrupted, conquered, or influenced by the Scandinavians. The biggest, the baddest, and the best. Unfortunately for Scandinavia here, things aren't going too well. Sweden has just lost Finland to Russia. Finland, having been a part of Sweden for the past 500 years at this point, this is a huge blow to them. Denmark also loses Norway and Schleswig Holstein, nowadays northern Germany, at approximately the same time. So, these previously pretty big countries, who both wanted to be empires, well, they've turned into what a certain American president would have referred to as, well, shithole countries. They don't have a lot to be proud of in their present. Instead, the Scandinavians who reach into the past and they see an age when they sailed all over the known world here. Ah yes, sometimes even beyond that, to Iceland, Greenland, North America, and as recent research has indicated, possibly all the way to the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Their raids are infamous, spreading fear and terror into the hearts of the civilized European nations. The Vikings and the Viking Age become very popular here in Scandinavia, not only in, you know, pop culture, but also within academia, within research. Now, the research being produced during this time period is, still to this day, surprisingly accurate, despite its age. Not all research ages as well. However, if you read some of the older stuff, you may get the impression that the Vikings reproduced by cloning. <coughs> they don't, obviously. And somehow we still see these lines of bearded kings after bearded kings after bearded kings. And it doesn't help matters that half of them are called Harold Sun either. It's so bad that I can guarantee you that every single one of you here, with the possible exception of our youngest participant right here, carries at least one thing with them every day that's named after a Viking king called Harold. You carry two of them right now, sir. Or three, even. Yes, Bluetooth! Harald Bluetooth is a 10th century king of Denmark, Harald the Blauter, the Old Norse. And it's given not only the name to Bluetooth, but also a symbol. You can look into your phones, tablets, earphones, or even smartwatch, and you'll see the symbol for Bluetooth is the Viking Age rules for H and B. His initials kind of superimposed and put together. Now, this was never the signature or the seal of any king during Viking Age, but rather, uh, rather uh, the practice of combining roots like that is known to, from the Viking Age. We usually call it Vindlunur, literally bound or connected roots. The reason for these cloning shenanigans are quite simple. Early historians, especially, well, they're not too interested in the conditions of women and children during the Viking Age. Nowadays, you're a lot better at this, and here at the Viking Museum, we do quite a bit of work in showing as broad a picture of the Viking Age as possible. Maybe even moving away a little from the idea that every single Viking has to be this blown, bearded giant. Yes, I realize I need me telling you guys this. <laughs> I am a little stereotype, it's probably why they hired me as well. <laughs> It's not only the Scandinavians who joined the Vikings during the 19th century, but also several areas affected by them. This includes, of course, the British Isles and northern France, but also areas where we come from northern Poland, Ukraine, parts of western Russia, and Germany. And it is in Germany that we find Hedrich Wagner. Now, Richard Wagner is an opera composer. You, sir, do you know what an opera is? It's musical theatre. You stand on the stage. You sing very loudly and strangely. Stereotypically, you're quite fat as well. The year is 1876, and Richard Wagner is putting together the first complete showing of his masterpiece, Der Ringen des Nibelungen. 
to a saga in the ring of the medieval wars. Now, this is an opera that's loosely based on the Viking Age legends.